the 2022 Lincoln Aviator Reserve. The Lincoln Aviator was an, a nameplate from Lincoln in the early 2000s, late 1990s that Lincoln killed off. But then they decided to bring it back to this, the new Lincoln Aviator. I personally think they did a wonderful job and I love the way these aviators look. Thank you to Duval Acura for allowing me to film here today. They have a wide selection of new and used vehicles. If you are ever in need of a newer used car or truck in the Jacksonville area, come over to Duval Acura at 11225 Atlantic Boulevard in Jacksonville, Florida and ask for Matt Sykes. He'll hook you up with whatever you need and you will drive away happy. Thank you again to Duval Acura. I can't thank them enough. So let's talk aviator. This Lincoln Aviator comes in a very nice red color. It's known as burgundy velvet. I think it looks really good on this car. I think it fits it well. You know, it's not. I'm usually not a huge fan of red on cars, but this darker red color fits the Aviator really well, in my opinion. So, yeah, it's also got a metallic, this color is a metallic tinted clear coat. So the full name is Burgundy Velvet Metallic Tinted Clear Coat. It's got an ebony leather interior. We'll talk about that later. I really like the way the front of this car looks. It looks it's very held back, but it still looks nice. It's nice and wide. It has, it has a good presence, but it's not overpowering to the point where you're like, oh, that's a big car. Even though it's still a big car, it has a nice dialed back look. You do have these very nice 20 inch alloy wheels. Again, I really like the way these look. You got your aviator name badge right there. I think that ties the design really well. Your mirrors are folded right now, but if I unlock the car with the key, they will unfold. Well, I gotta open the door. Maybe not. Oh, there we go. Now they unfold. So here's what the car looks like with the mirrors unfolded. I'll keep them unfolded for now. I love the black mirror caps. I love black mirror caps on cars. I think, I think it gives it a really nice look. It makes it look sportier. And I think tying it in with this blacked out roof line, it, it ties in with the car really, really well. These also have some very large seeming door handles and I'll talk more about those in a second. They don't function as normal door handles and that's actually really cool the way they do function. But moving around to the back here you have this it's kind of like a sloping roof line and I've heard mixed opinions about it some people don't like it I personally really like the like lowered stance of the back I think it's cool. You have quad exhaust on this thing so that's that's also really cool. You get the light bar going across the back you get the Lincoln name this is a very good looking rear end of a car. You got your shark fin antenna that's also blacked out up there. Cool little touch. You got all the chrome trim running down the side. You really think this is a very well designed car. So enough going on about the design. Let's talk safety features for a minute. So this car is equipped with the Lincoln Copilot 360 system. And that includes lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, um, you have rear cross traffic alert, you also get automatic high beams, parking sensors, and automatic emergency braking, which includes pedestrian detection, which is helpful, especially driving around in the city. While a lot of people come in and out of sidewalks, it'll detect pedestrians and stop. Um, but this is the reserve trim, as I mentioned earlier. And that adds 
Lincoln's Copilot 360 Plus system. So that will get you, in addition to everything I already listed, you get a surround view camera system, active park assist, um, and you also get evasive steering assist, which is cool, like, you know, accident avoidance system. So, go ahead and give you a quick look at the key. You press this button here, the physical key will pull out. You separate it. Um, got your remote start, your lock, unlock, and your trunk release. So before we step into the aviator, I wanna mention, like I said earlier, the door handles are kinda of interesting. So I try to pull them, they don't pull. There's a little button. I don't really know if you can see it, but I press the button and the doors open automatically like that. So that's a pretty cool feature in my opinion. So stepping into the 2022 Lincoln Aviator, you can hear that chime. And a fun thing about that chime is the people at Lincoln, the Lincoln designers actually worked with the Detroit Symphony Orchestra to develop those unique sounds. So those chimes are unique to the Aviator. So that's a really cool feature. But this is a push button start vehicle. Put my foot on the brake and press the on button here. I really think that's a cool sounding chime. It's unique. It's not like anything you hear in most cars. Usually it's just a ding, ding, ding. But this car, you know, it's cool. I like it. So, driving position. It, it, it's nice. I like this driving position. The steering wheel feels nice in my hands. I can reach the gear shifter, which is right here. Um, I can see over the hood perfectly fine. I can see all around me, out my mirrors, behind me. This car isn't as long as it looks. It doesn't feel as long. I've driven a Buick Enclave and that feels much longer than this car does. I can see out my mirrors really well. This is just a really good driving position. I, I can reach the screen. I can reach everything I need to reach and nothing, nothing feels out of my reach, but it doesn't feel cramped either. It's just a really nice position. So, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the stuff you get in the Aviator. What kind of stuff does the driver get to look at? So, looking over at the driver's door panel over here, you get your seat controls up here, memory seating, you got your nice speaker there, you got your door locks, window controls, window controls, mirror controls, you can fold your mirrors using that button. Um, select a mirror, adjust using this circle, all your windows are one touch down and up. This is actually the button that you use to open the door. So you just press that and the door opens right up. However, say the car battery's dead, you do get a manual switch down there. And I can use that by reaching down, pulling, and manually opening the door like so. You do get a cup holder, a little bit of storage down in here, actually a, a lot of bit of storage down back there. That extends quite a bit, if you can see down in there. You do get a nice Lincoln plate down here but there's nothing on the side of the seat because all the seat controls are up here. Off to the left of the steering wheel, you get your um, tailgate release, you can open the trunk, you got all your headlight controls, put them on automatic, turn them parking lights, turn them off. And then you have your gauge cluster brightness, so you can turn it up, turn it down. You got an air vent here. You got your trunk release and your pedals down there. So, closing the door back up now, you can take a look at what you get within the screen up here. So, looking down into the gauge cluster screen here, you don't get a whole bunch, but it's, it's more than enough in my opinion. I really like simple gauge clusters, and this is just that. I got my speedometer off to the left, uh, or I guess rather the middle. Um, and on the right, I have some adjustability. So I can, I can go, well, before I talk about that, 
I can I can scroll through some other menus in here, display setup, I can see my oil life, all that stuff. But over here, there's a button on the steering wheel and I can scroll through some different things in here. I can see my tire pressure. I can see a calm screen, which just leaves it blank. I can see a tripometer and my fuel economy. Back to that. Um, you can see what gear you're in. So park, reverse, neutral, and drive. And then if I use the paddle shifters, you can see that there too. Um, over here I see my fuel level and over here I see my engine temperature. I've also got a compass up there. Now looking at the steering wheel itself, on the back you have your lane centering, so if I press this, this will turn on and off lane centering. And then, you know, standard turn signals, although it does have a fun sound. I like the way those turn signals sound. You also, you also have the, the three time if you're changing lanes. And then flash your high beams turn, and pull them this way to turn them on when the headlights are on. Here you have, um, on the other side, your wipers control. So one time, and then three of the different intermittent settings. And you've had, you can adjust the intermittent, and then over here you have your rear wiper, which actually comes down out of the roof, which is cool. So it's concealed back there and isn't, isn't visible when looking at the back of the car, which I think has a really clean look. Pull it towards you for front wiper fluid, and push away for rear wiper fluid. Now the steering wheel itself, it's super light. I don't have to put any effort into turning it at all. It's a very nice wheel. I like the way it sits in my hand. I like the way it looks. I really like this steering wheel. <clears throat> you got your little voice command button right there, right next to where your thumb is anyway, which is also cool. You get your volume and um, switch station over here. You get your cruise control and that'll turn on these controls down here um, when the cruise control is on. So they're hidden right now, which is kind of cool. Um, and then this is the button I was using to scroll through the screen over here. And then this was what I was using to scroll through the main menus in here. On the back of the steering wheel, I have my paddle shifters, which are fun, and I've got my horn. So, looking over in the center, I've got my center screen here, infotainment system, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so, this is the home page. I've got my map here. If there's audio playing, that'll show there, and if a phone is connected, that'll show there. That's cool. And now I've got all these shortcuts along the bottom. And before I keep going, I just wanna say, I have always liked Ford and Lincoln infotainment systems. They are always so simple. I can look at this and know exactly what I'm looking at. I've seen cars where they leave you guessing. You're, you have to figure out what you're looking at. And when you're driving, that's not something you want to be worrying about. Like, oh, what is that saying? If you want something you can quickly glance over at and understand what it's saying, especially if you're driving somewhere. So, you got your audio, I'll give you a listen to that. So this is a really good sound system in my opinion. Um, but you can see your sources here, um, you can see your um, presets, that stuff. You got your direct tune here, so that's, that's cool. Back home, you got your phone. You can add a phone, connect to a phone. And here's your navigation. You've got a very responsive map. It's very nice. You can zoom in, see exactly where you are, or you could use these. This this changes it between facing the direction you're facing or just facing north, and also change it to the 3D. So, like here's the 3D. You can have it stuck north, have it facing the direction you're facing or have it 3D. This tells you where you are, what city you're in, we're in Jacksonville, and you can search, you got your menu here. So you got all your settings, you can traffic list, where am I? 
You can say, where am I? It'll tell you exactly where you are, which is kind of cool. You got points of interest. All that stuff is in here. You can set a preset for your home, a preset for your work. That's where you'd find that stuff. So in here, here are your apps. And you can find your mobile apps if you have a phone connected. Here's where you can connect a device. You got your Sirius XM, all that. Here are your sound settings, or all your settings. And then here's your sound settings. You can adjust your speed compensated volume, which is actually a really cool feature because what that'll do is if you start accelerating onto the highway, it will, um, it'll increase the volume of the music so it doesn't get drown drowned out by the road noise. You got a clock here, you got your clock settings, your radio settings in here. You got all your vehicle settings. It's where you can adjust everything like that. Here you've got your driver assistance settings. And one thing I really like about this infotainment system, and Ford does this too, if you don't know what something is, you press the little I and it will tell you. And this actually shows a picture of a Lincoln Aviator, which is very nice. But yeah, cross traffic alert, it'll show you what that does. Auto start stop, what does that do? It'll show you. So that's a really nice feature in my opinion. And this is where you can turn on and off your auto brake hold also. Here you got your general settings. That's where you can adjust language, temperature units, that stuff. Do a factory reset. And you got your display settings here. So I can change the background color. I can change it to a calm screen if I want. other things like that. Yeah, I got my navigation settings again. I got ambient lighting. I can adjust which color I want. If I want it to be yellow, I'll press yellow, red, blue, all that. Uh, here I can adjust the lumbar support. It's That's done specifically through the screen, which I find kind of interesting. Same with the passenger seat. Like, there's no controls for that on the door. You have to go through the screen to do that. And that's not something I love, but Oh well, can't have everything. So, now that we've covered pretty much most of what happens in the screen, let's talk about what happens below the screen. Or next to it here is the start stop button I pressed earlier to start the car. But, sorry about that, but looking down here, you get your, um, here are your cameras. So if I want to look at my cameras, I can actually see a nice surround view camera here. I see all what's all around me, what's in front of me right now, and if I put the car in reverse using this button here, I get a backup camera. Now, I don't have to press this button to turn the backup camera on. As you see me demonstrating right now, I do have trajectory lines, which is cool. So, if I go back into park, you see it's on this screen, right? The home screen. So, I, I can just shift into reverse and it'll automatically pull up that screen, which is nice. And I can also zoom in to see a very, much closer if I need to for some reason. I can change to a bigger angle of this. And I can see next to me, too. So, it provides a wider angle. So, moving back down to the shifter here, we got neutral and we got drive. I'm going to put it back in park. Um, moving further down here, we have our radio controls. So, that this here is your volume. Uh, press it to turn the audio off. This will lock out the rear audio controls, which I'll show you those later. Um, this will change the source of the audio. You got your hazard switch here, and then you can seek through different stations. Do the same with that. Moving further below that, you get your climate controls. So what you get with that is you got your um, temperature here. Um, 
in here, and all that you do is displayed up here. So let's see if I can get a little further back angle so you can see what's going on while I do it. All right, so like I said, there's your temperature, you got your heated steering wheel, heated seats, as well as cooled seats, which are nice. I've been using the cool seats because it's pretty hot here in Florida today. I can put it on auto, got my rear defroster, I can adjust fan speed using this middle dial. I've got a menu here, which will take me to the screen in here where I can adjust everything. And so that'll, this is just digital controls of these down here. This will adjust where I want the air to blow, but that brings up this screen that allows me to do it in here. I wish I could just press this and have it change automatically, but it just adds an extra step to the process. Um, here I've got my recirculating air or fresh air, and then the passenger heated and cooled seats, heated and cooled, and then the t passenger temperature. I can put it to max AC, and I can click this just to have the fans blowing without the actual air conditioning. So that was a pretty quick rundown of what those do. Um, looking further down here, I get some storage down there. Can put I can plug in USB C and USB A, which is nice. And I got a longer one here with two cup holders in it and a little storage cubby up there where I could put the keys or something. Here is my electronic parking brake. I push it down to turn it on or off, sorry, and then pull it up to turn it on. Here I've got my drive mode selector. So if I can see that in here. So I've got normal, slippery, deep conditions, but no, well, okay, sorry, let me go back the other way, conserve, which is like an eco mode, and then excite, which is the sport mode. And that changes the gauge cluster to have a tachometer um, and your fuel economy and all the stuff in there centered. If I change it to conserve the gauge cluster looks like this same with normal slippery looks like this which is the same I think all the rest of them look the same I think excite is the only one that actually changes it to have a tachometer so that's adjusted by twisting this dial here Behind that, we have a very large center console, a little storage tray in here. USB, or not USB, um, 12 volt, and a little card holder here. Got a little coin holder down there, and a little light right there. So, looking up above me, I have a sun visor. Got your mirror right there. This will pop out swing around and slide out like so and then I have my garage home link right there here I've got my sun visor or sunglasses holder sorry and then I got some lights here and this will turn the um, lights this will keep them from opening when the doors open here I can open up this sunroof or this sunroof cover and the sunroof. So that's really nice. To open the sunshade the rest of the way, I press this one. These are the sunshade controls. These are the sunroof controls. So push the sunroof back. But if I can't use them both at the same time, I have to choose one. They are one touch though. And if I press this one again, it'll vent it. So now that we've covered pretty much everything in the driver's area, let's go ahead and take a look at the passenger areas. So hopping around into the back seat here, the door pretty much the same. You do get your own door locks back here, which is cool. Your window control, which is one touch, but you don't get a manual door release back here. 
sitting back here, these seats, they're kind of like stadium seating. So I'm sitting a bit higher than I was up there, which is fine. Moving down here, I actually get a little screen, which is really, really cool. So I can adjust my seats. So I can, I can use the heated or cooled seat function back here, which is really nice. Same for the passenger. I can adjust the climate back here so I can up the fan speed, adjust the temperature, turn it off. I can decide where I want the air to blow and I can set it to auto. I also can do all the same for the third row or I can synchronize them. I can do an air quality test back here and I can control audio from back here too. change stations I can do everything but from back here which is really cool um, and then I have settings I can turn it to a calm screen which actually looks really cool it's like clouds I can adjust the brightness and I can just turn the display off got my two little air vents here and I got a little charge ports USB A and USB C and a household style outlet got two cup holders back here a little storage cubby there I can actually adjust the sunshade from back here if I wanted to, which is really cool. And I've got a little storage cubby down in here. Um, so it's really deep, but then I've also got USB-A and USB-C. Got a little storage pocket. Up here I got a little light and a grab handle with a hook. So hopping around here, I got my gas cap. So this car takes um, premium gasoline and it has an MPG rating of 18 city and 26 highway. So coming around to the trunk, I can open it using a little button there. And even with the third row up, I get plenty of trunk room. And I have even more under the floor. I can lift this up and I still get a spare tire, which is awesome. A little bit difficult to put back, but there we go. Got a 12 volt outlet over here, a little hook, and I can fold down the third row seats using this button here. little cargo um, tie down over here, another little hook. And so if I only want to bring one up, I can click 3R, that'll turn the right one up, and 3L will bring the left one up. Shut the trunk, just press this. If I press this one, it'll lock the car also. A little Lincoln badge right there too. Moving over here, same door. <coughs> However, I can fold the seat down like this, or if I want to get in the third row, I can press that and it'll slide forward. Got a little step right here. Bring myself back over here. Pull this. And I'm sitting in the third row. Now the third row is a bit cramped. My knees are really high off the ground. However, my head is not hitting the ceiling. That might be a concern that you would think looking at the outside, how the rear roof slopes but there's a little cutout and it's just enough room to where my head is not hitting the ceiling. I am actually really comfortable back here. I have plenty of arm room. Like this is a genuinely nice car to be in the back of. I would not complain going on a road trip in this third row. I can fit my, I have enough space to fit my feet under. I can move them out this way. There's nothing, this is floating so I can tuck my feet under it. Like I have way more room back here than I thought I did. It is nice back here. It is genuinely nice back here. I got a little storage cubby up there too. Another one over here. But I would be a happy, happy camper. If I had to go on a road trip down maybe like an hour, hour and a half, <clears throat> maybe two hours, like if you were driving to Orlando or something, I would survive back here. It is not bad. I'm gonna push this up, get up and out of here. Move this back. 
Also, the seat has a little bar on the bottom. I can move it forward and backward. I get a little storage cubby down there on both sides, which is kind of cool. You can sit your phone down in there or something. Hop around the passenger seat here. Same door, except you get um, controls there now. This button actually takes you to the screen where you can adjust the lumbar support. I didn't realize that before. You have a cool wood trim across the dash, a piano black trim, and your books in there. You got a little storage pass through, which is cool. Put an umbrella in there or something. Lincoln. So now let's go ahead and talk about the engine. To access the engine bay, you're gonna come down here and pull this twice. So now, because I pulled it twice, I can just lift this right up. There's no tab in here I have to pull, which I think that is a really nice feature. But now that we've opened this up, what you're looking at is a three liter twin turbo V6. Compared to a 10 speed automatic transmission, it makes 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. This aviator will go from zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds it has, and it has a rear wheel drive drivetrain. Let's go ahead and give it a listen, shall we? I again want to say thank you to Duval Acura for allowing me to come out here and film today. And I also want to say thank you guys for sticking with me and watching this video on the 2022 Lincoln Aviator Reserve. If you guys have any cars you want to see me review, or if you have any suggestions on things you'd like to see me do in my reviews. Let me know. But until next time, you all have a good one. Bye-bye.